loud. There we go. Dude, today I'm so stoked. Uh, I think that Jed is, is here. I think, well, he's under Piranha, but I today we're going to learn everything about Amazon. Um, oh, sh and also Emily is joining. Okay, we need to make sure that when when Emily joins in, we give her the hardest time. Uh, because Emily, I she's the worst. Ugh, like I you don't get <laughs> to talk trash. <laughs> I'm gonna come at oh. come at you swinging. <laughs> so here's the thing. I was like, okay, she's gonna be coming on this. We have to give her the hardest time. Like this <laughs> is this is a hundred percent what we have to do. Um, no, I'm uh, I want to do a quick introduction i don't know if jed's on because i have your guys's piranha here but i don't know if if uh let me let me text him real quick yeah no worries um so today's really cool because we've done some pretty awesome stuff with oh there he is he's just joining now oh perfect um so uh i'll just oh perfect got some more people here joining up jed you there where's he at Jed, right, what's up, buddy? Hey, so uh, I was just saying how I'm so incredibly excited to have you guys join us here today. Uh, aside from Emily and all the shit that I got to deal with with her, uh, I love you guys. You're just so amazing. Um, and uh, it, realist, guys, I just want you to know, like, this agency has done wonders for our Morning Man brand. And I know that you guys know a lot about Jonathan Hunsaker and the work that he's done with organics as well. But um, this agency is responsible for so much growth and so much success for uh, my personal companies. Um, and then also uh, with Jonathan Organics and a bunch of other really cool brands. Um, so it was a real pleasure to be able to have them join us and, and really kind of be our give of the week, but then also just kind of be a, a a really good resource for um, our own work. So uh, for those of you, I know a lot of you have, um, you know, you have your company that whether you are on Amazon or you are considering it, these are the guys, no matter what, I wouldn't point anybody elsewhere. Um, and uh, I'm just excited that you guys are going to, you know, gleam some light on what Amazon success truly looks like. And uh, again, I just uh, grateful and, and appreciative for uh, all the work we get to do um, as well. So thank you guys. for yourself. Anytime. It's all Emily. Emily's the real brains of the operation. <laughs> so um, I want to real quick jump in here, uh, let you guys know kind of what this whole crazy group is and um what it's all about. So uh, our Give Network here, uh, it started off uh, a little over about two years ago. Um, I would, yeah, about two years ago. So we 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 grew together to be really a, a resource and, and, a, and a, really a platform for everybody to safely and securely uh, get feedback, share ideas, and really chop up each other's stuff. Um, really from a CEO and an implementer standpoint. So everybody here um, in every regard is the owner of their own business. And we have our own challenges, but we also um, have our own wins. So this platform, this every two weeks, we get together and get to share about what is winning, what is not, the challenges around it. We do hot seats and uh, everybody's here to give back to one another. That's the concept here for Give. So um, we're just excited to have you give to us guys and um i man i just i i'm going to i'm going to have you get right into it here in just a bit but before i do um i got the agenda thank you obon for dropping that in here um but if you want to go ahead and head over to the chat section guys uh i'm going to go ahead and bring this up so as far as next week goes uh just as a quick heads up uh, our give of the week next week is going to be yours truly. You're going to have to hear my stupid self here a little bit longer, but um, we're going to talk about finding hungry buying audiences using um, Answer the Public. Now, a couple weeks back, we ended up doing, those of you who are able to uh, be a part of that segment of the call, I was kind of just doing in our gravy time, just some extra, you know, looks at, at finding audiences and utilizing this really cool 
cool targeting tool called Ads to the Public. And so what I'm going to do in, in, in two weeks time, I'm going to actually do a full breakdown of how we use answer the public to find little pocket opportunities of what people are searching for most on Google, in, uh, YouTube. Um, and then I think it's Bing as well, but mostly we're going to focus on Google. So through those audiences that we find, we're then going to create ads around the questions that they're asking most about your company and or brand. From there, I'm going to give you some templates that you can use uh, on Canva that I'm going to already have pre-ready to go. And we're also going to write an ad in ChatGPT all in about 10 minutes. So I hope that's going to be valuable to you. Uh, it's really cool and it's just super effective because frankly, why not insert yourself into the communication of what your brand or excuse me, your, your customers are talking about. And when it comes to you, let's just, uh, let's just put ourselves in the best light possible. So that's next week. And then December 26th, uh, for those of you who are going to be online, we're going to have a fun Christmas holiday special. So come dressed in your best yuppie sweater. That's right. We're going to be wearing the ugliest of ugly sweaters. So please be sure to bring that. There's going to be a contest for best and, well, I guess best, worst, you know, they, they go hand in hand in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and give prizes away for that. But then on our special, for those of you who have not been a part of this before, we're going to play some holiday bingo. And so we're going to have about $500 worth of prizes that I'm going to give away for that. And so it'll be various cool, weird things. Every year, we obviously have to bring back the people of Walmart coloring book. So that one's always a good give. And then uh, uh, I'm just, um, yeah, I'm just excited to do it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we'll probably end up starting the call with a little bit of our accountability. So don't stress, we're gonna still get some work done, but this is gonna be my appreciation and give back to you guys. So thank you so much for making the year so great and uh, excited to see you guys there. So, all right. So on the agenda, if you look, what we have here is uh, we have accountability from previous week. Just to explain what this section is for those of you who are newer, um, is uh, it's it's focused on holding us accountable to what we can do every two weeks. Okay, so um, for those of you who weren't here last time, these were what you said you were going to accomplish here uh, over this last two week period. Okay, so right at the end of this, again. Uh, for those of you who are new, you're going to be asked to write down two things that you're going to accomplish in the next two weeks. And then we just basically check in on you, see how that went, see how we can support you. And if there's anything we can do to actually help you get to the finish line on those projects. Okay. So number one, uh, first up, uh, Margie, how are you oh, doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Margie. So you said uh, you were going to get 20 new affiliate partners for the summit finish all registration gifts for the summit and start a, I think it's start a TikTok channel. Is that, uh, I think that's, that's your third one. How did those go? Okay. So I did, I have gotten over uh -huh. 20 more affiliate partners. So that's doing great. The summit nice. part's doing really great. The second one, wait, what was the second one? Oh, all my gifts, all my gifts, except for it's being finished today. So I'm in really good shape with my registration Wonderful. gifts. So they're, they're done. The third one, I didn't even get close. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> in the TikTok, it just sounded, I'm trying to get as much new traffic as possible prior to the summit, new people. And so I thought that would be great, but I didn't, I didn't even get close to doing anything. I guess I need to talk to Rob to help me with that. <laughs> but, but anyway, but yeah, I'm happy for where I'm at. I'm definitely. Yeah, definitely reach out to him. He will help you get set up. Uh, yeah, he will help you 100% get set up. And anybody who do, does need any kind of TikTok uh, related support, uh, I think Robert now, I think he texted me, I think he's up to almost 1.7 million, 1.8 million in, in, in followers on TikTok alone. So um, definitely, if you want a connection, uh, please feel free to let me know. And I'm Oh, he's on my, we're, we're friends, we're buddies. So yeah. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, wonderful. Okay, Kareem, you there, bud? Can you hear me now? There he is. I was muted. Yeah. Oh, hello, hello. What's going oh. on? All right. So get ESP warming for Mero Post, sign on new partnership, and then 4,000 followers on TikTok. How are we doing? Still working on the new partnership sign on, but you know, that's coming through. That's just, I think, delays with holidays and everything that goes with that. The other two are checked off. So TikTok, right. it's just over 4,700 right now, and the new ESP is warming up. And we actually have another ESP that starts warming up today as well. Wonderful. You... 
so I mean, on TikTok, you started that what like three weeks ago, something like that. Yeah, we had a video get like eighty thousand views last week, so that really helped things out, and it had this crazy conversion rate that I haven't seen before out of any of the other videos. But I'm new to the platform, but it was like maybe about 55% of people that watch the video turn into a follower for a huge period of a surge, which was really neat to see. I don't know why it converted. Nice. That's awesome, man. I, you cut out there for a second, but would you be open at the end of this call? That well, to... I'm looking more into it, but that was really interesting. Oh, can you hear me now? Sorry, I'm driving at the moment. Yeah, buddy. You, you cut out there for a minute, but if you get reception a little better later on this call, could you share that video or share at least like what you did and, and what <clears throat> go a little deeper after later on this call. Yeah, I'd love to. In fact, I'd love to just, you know, see what you guys see as well and hopefully just make it a share so that everybody can benefit the same way. So, uh, all... Awesome. All right, buddy. I'm going to have to, <clears throat> I'm going to have to pause you. Sorry. All right. Um it's on that link moment. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I, I muted him, um, but he'll get reception here back again. So, um, Oban, what's up, buddy? In the chat, and we go from there, whatever you guys want. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Thank you, buddy. Um, so, Oban, you there? Yep, I'm awesome, here. Awesome, man. Get the Nutanix certification. I guess that, am I not sure I'm pronouncing that right? And then visit Hungary. How'd that go? It went well. I got it pretty easy good work um, if you don't know what it is it's basically like a huge company that provides some cool tech uh virtualization tech so basically that's what allows your hardware in a data center to have like so many virtual machines on nice. one piece of hardware so i got that i didn't visit hungary yet because i had to postpone it work stuff but i'm going there so Soon, soon, soon. Awesome. Good work, dude. Wonderful. Miss Barbara. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Good. Hello. All right. So you have, have everything set up for the Dr. H's December webinar course sales. Um, start working on the one to two new lead, lead gen projects. Get cut up on business accounting. Um, I'd say the webinar course sales about 90% done. Just... Um, pretty good progress feel good about having it all wrapped up by next week and um good. didn't start on any new lead gen projects okay <laughs> um but i did get caught up on all my accounting good that was a big one all right uh, do you need any support on any the lead gen or anything else um just more hours in the day uh -huh. <laughs> or more money to hire people i love it well, like I said, in, in, in two weeks time, when we get through the answer to the public stuff, you'll be able to create some pretty, pretty unreal uh, targeted uh, headlines. And, and uh, I think that you'll, you'll, you'll glean some pretty cool stuff from that. All right. Cool. Um, awesome. Kirby. You there, bud? Mute. There he is. <laughs> howdy, howdy. All right, but I update all product descriptions for Sears. Yep, got all that done. Thanks to Chat GPT. Love it. <laughs> uh, sitting in compliance right now. Next step will be to drop it on his desk. Then launch YouTube ads for SA. Um, still haven't gotten the videos from the company that's working with that. Um, but I'm jumping mm -hmm. on a call with them at four o'clock. So hopefully that gets done. And then finish Dr. Sears Google ad revamp. That's like 90% done getting a little bit of compliance pushback. So compliance with me. So that can always, yeah. but yeah, everything's moving. Yeah, man. And I'm excited for you to kind of implement. I want you to, if, if you haven't had a chance, please connect uh, with Emily and, uh, and Jed here. I think that your Titanic of a brand at Sears could, Dr. Sears could really, uh, could really do wonders with them. Yeah. That's actually a pretty good idea. And I might have a couple other clients too. So awesome. Yeah, I think that you guys she should you should connect. Um he's got a Dr. Sears is a pretty significant men's health brand and they're heavy, heavy, heavy 
on compliance and and um yeah i don't know i think that i think there could be i feel like they're a men's men's health version of of organics if that could create some context there like similar similar in size and stuff emily you there i don't know if you heard that so i'm anyway. listening all right, cool. I just, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if you went out mm -hmm. to the Chick-fil-A or something. I got nothing. All right, cool. Um, So Addison. Yeah. What's up, dude? Uh, record and publish AI copywriting made easy masterclass and the surrounding funnel uh, leading into CopyBot Builders Bootcamp. Create and publish the affiliate Swipe GPT. Promote the Swipe GPT. Formalize and promote your GPT installation offer. Man, you were busy. What's going on? How'd it go? Yeah, I did the masterclass. So that nice. was cool. Yeah, I didn't do those other GPTs though. I didn't do oh, that. Okay. That's yeah. okay. Yeah, a little bit I'm of- I'm to see this, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to take a look at any of the, you want to share it a little later on a hot seat? Sure. I mean, basically I did a live, it was a webinar. I taught a bunch of stuff. I, um, you know, pitched a GPT builders, uh, bootcamp and no one nibbled on it yet. So I kind of, um, yeah, pivoted or put, put energy elsewhere. So I haven't, yeah. So I don't have a, I don't even have a recording or anything of the masterclass currently, but I'm just going gotcha. to, I don't know if there was a landing page, but, um, yeah. Well, why don't we talk through some of that here a little later? Happy cool. to strategize a little bit, all right? Cool. Yeah, I mean, there's kind of, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll talk. There's some awesome. different things. I'm kind of pivoting a little bit with some of that stuff, but yeah, we can totally talk cool. through it. Awesome, man. Mr. Gabe, you have finalized uh, our VSL script and record it, connect with SVRN group investor list, and then send awakening series distribution queries. How'd that go? Yeah, we're still obviously doing a lot of great work on the script, um, but uh, lined up a lot of the visuals for that. And I know I'll get that recorded after we go over that uh, this week. Yeah. Um, the Sovereign Group uh, queries those. That's a networking investor group. I've reached out to about three out of five targets on there. And then I've gotten only two out of the five of my Awakening series. But um, it's doing heavier research on each target, which takes me a little longer sometimes than I expect. But um, plugging away. Nice. I love it. Okay. Uh, you and I, we have a lot that we're going to rip through the, the script, but is there anything else we can do to support you on that? No, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Cool, man. So I'm going to round up with, I got a, I got a laundry list of things. Thankfully I got a lot of it done. Uh, finished crazy lead gen side project with Florencia uh, done crazy lead gen project. So uh, I'm, still in testing mode, but I wanted to challenge myself to find a niche I knew nothing about and uh, write uh, a funnel that I've never been a part of and be able to find a pocket of opportunity to target the leads and get them cheap and then sell in the back end. And so all of it's testing right now. Uh, so we were able to get it live, get it going, get it integrated all within about 48 hours. So funnel sequence all going, um, which was cool. Uh, we went live and now we're just getting ads and now we're just testing it. So more to come on that. Finish morning man gut challenge lander done. That thing. I was 99% of the way done. I literally had like five edits left. And weirdly I put like the most important ones. I will, you know, like the cart links last. And then I went to go click save and the page corrupted on me in click funnels. So that was, that was a fun couple of days to try to figure all that out. Got it figured it out. Now we're good. And now we're live. So that's awesome. Uh, finish all Christie VSL assets done. Record this Christie VSL done. We're re-recording it because pacing was off and we needed a little bit faster pace. So that's good. Finish and record strange pain VSL done. And then now Gabe, which you and I are going to go over the edits. And we're going to get that probably recorded the next day or two. So check all right so i'm excited to see what your next two weeks are going to look like so whether you think you can make it next week or not it's just good to put intention out there so please in the chat in the group chat please put in for everybody to see two things you want to accomplish the next two weeks 
This could be something that is simple as, you know, I want to do something personal. I want to go take my family out on this vacation and I want to do it within that period of time. Or I want to update this one funnel piece. It needs to be specific and it needs to also challenge you. So please take two minutes and go ahead and put that in there. Thank you guys. All right, cool. So, Mr. Jed. You there? Be a bad time for you not to be. No, I'm here. <laughs> My man. Hey, uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, I just am uh I'm grateful to be able to work with you guys because uh you've you've backed up everything that you've said. Um, I have you know proof within my own work, us scaling with Morning Man on Amazon and um, I've been talking about you guys for a while now, and I'm finally, uh, I'm finally excited to have you here with my people. And um, yeah, and so the floor is yours. If you want to share your screen and show anything, or if uh, you have a presentation or you want to show whatever you want to do, man, the floor is yours. You've got a little over you know, about 12-ish minutes, and then um, I'm sure people have questions. I know I do. So have at it. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Um, give me just a second here and I'll do a, I'll do just a quick share screen. Um, let's see. First of all, thanks for letting us take a few minutes. My goal is not to be super long winded. So the goal is, Hey, like we're happy to talk about a few things and share what we've learned. And we've had a lot of wins. We've had a lot of failures. My background is, um, I've been doing Amazon for eight years now. I used to manage Amazon for Quest Nutrition, helped get them up to a, a billion. They sold uh, to 40, they sold, they did 50 million a year on Amazon. They sold a few years ago for a billion. Um, since that time, we've had two dozen clients exit for 10 million or more. Um, half of those we ramp from zero. We've had six clients exit for hundred million or more. Um, G Fuel is one of our clients. They're an energy drink company. They just sold for 100 million plus last week. And earlier this year, we had C4 um, exit to Dr. Pepper Snapple Group for 2.4 billion. Um, we specialize in just to Amazon. Like, so some guys try to be good at 15 things, like we're really good at one thing. And for us, like a couple of things make us different. Number one, like we don't offshore work to like Costa Rica or the Philippines for three bucks an hour. Hey like, buddy, just sorry for interrupting. Did you want to share your screen on anything? You're not sharing if you were. Oh yeah. Let me, let me go ahead and share it real quick. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for the heads up there. Um, cool. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Yeah, buddy. No, that's great. Thank you. All right, cool. Um, so we've managed, we've managed uh, half a billion since inception. Um, it's getting closer to like a billion now. We have 30 employees where half of the team is based in the, in Dallas, half the team is based in San Diego. Um, we're one of the few Amazon agencies that's PE backed. So I sold a piece of Piranha a couple of years ago for eight figures, um, double down strategy. Um, and then we've tripled since then. So we've had a lot of fun. Um, I grew it from zero. I, my claim to fame is I've got two sets of twin girls. 
I'm the only guy you're going to meet that has two, that was dumb enough to have two sets of twin girls in less than three years. So I've got <laughs> five-year-old girls and two eight-year-old girls. I literally live in a kindergarten classroom. <laughs> so, um, and yes, we did IVF. Um, it was a BOGO. It was a buy one, get one free. So you pay per transfer. You can get two new cars for the price of one and it worked out. So um, these are just some of the brands we've worked with. Casio was our first client. They're still our, our client today, the number one watch brand on Amazon. Um, we've worked with everything from BarkBox to Kula to Rip Curl to This Bar Saves Lives. Hugh Kitchen sold the Mondelez for $400 million. We grew them from zero. Vegan Chocolate Play. Um, New Face does like a $400 um, wrinkle anti-aging wrinkle reduction device on Amazon. They did really well. So we're pretty constant. We're pretty deep in pet beauty, sports and nutrition. We've done some electronics, but we're not super deep on it. And then in terms of what we do, um, you know, full Amazon marketplace management, there's the non-spend levers and the spend levers. I'd say the number one differentiator for us is we take a very principle-based approach, kind of a modified version of Ray Dalio's principles. And so for us, it's like, you know, there's some simple principles that will save you a lot of money. One of them is optimized for conversion first, traffic second. So most people spend a bunch of money, analyze a bunch of data. Six months later, they get down to how can you improve conversion and retention. And we feel like you're just more efficient with your marketing capital if, like Morning Man, you know, if you uh, if you optimize the non-spend levers first, so you have great images, great creative one of the great things about working with Morning Man is um, A, you guys are really smart, right? And then B, you guys execute. So you have great assets and you make a great product. There's three there's three caveats on our skill set. Um, if we, we looked at our failures one time and we we did a pattern analysis to see like if we could if we could distill any findings or learnings so we can focus on better clients, you know, that are more likely to grow. And what we learned was there's three things we can't do or get, we can't control organic review rating, repeat purchase rate, or competitive positioning marketplace. Those are the three caveats on our skill set. So organic review rating, you got to make a great product like Morning Man, right? And it's got to review well. You can do some short-term things to fluff it, but long-term, if people hate your brand, you're not going to be around very long. Um Repeat purchase rate in fast consumables like Morning Man. One of the reasons Morning Man doubled month over month uh, recently was because they have a great repeat purchase rate. So if you want to ramp really fast, make something that people want to buy, come back and buy again by the truckload. And then competitive positioning in the marketplace. Like I'm a simple guy. I think retail is low, medium, high on price, good, better, best on quality. A lot of people split the difference and buy a Toyota. And understanding those those marketplace dynamics, those market forces, a lot of people start by shouting at the market. You're more efficient with your marketing capital. If you the principle is you want to start by listening. So do an analysis on where the market is today, where it's headed, and then put yourself in the front of that wave. Does that make sense? Any questions so far? No, man. Keep going. So um already kind of hit this, but like we don't offshore to Costa Rica or the Philippines. We actually just launched a refund tool. Um, and it's basically auditing people's Amazon businesses and fighting for nickels and dimes when Amazon, if Amazon drives a forklift through a pallet, sometimes they reimburse you. Sometimes they don't right through like of, of your inventory. Uh, it's in month three, we've gotten back 300 grand uh, this month for clients and, uh, the business did not exist three months ago. Nice. So we've gotten, well, we've gotten back half a million for clients in the first three months of auditing. So it's kind of cool. What well, we're calling that business refund hawk. And then, you know, we've got some really cool tools. We've got programmatic bidding, best in class tech stack. We spend a quarter million a year for like a repeat purchase rate tool um, we have programmatic bidding, which is best in class, um, is an example of some of our reporting tools, KPI dashboards. Um, you know, we got C4, we took down monster red bull, um, every other energy drink on Amazon, except for one Celsius skew, but 
you know, it's, it's, it's between the number two and the top 10 energy drink, depending on the day. So that's kind of fun. And then, you know, it's a very competitive category, like pre-workouts. It's usually the number one best-selling repeat, uh, and the number one best-selling pre-workout. So, and here's some examples of like repeat versus first time customer analysis, repeat versus first time orders. Brett is familiar with kind of how we do this or, or will be. And so for us, it's like when we get a little bit of time underneath our belt, we can tell you like, you know, how many of your, like we break it down. This is a deodorant client and they sell some face stuff, some body stuff. And so we broke it down by here's all your deodorant clients. Here's your face, facial clients. Here's your body wash clients. Here's how many of your, or your sales are from repeats. How many are from first time customers? Here's your repeat versus new orders by month. No one else can give you this type of data. And if you're not looking at this type of data, you should, because it will fundamentally change the way you deploy marketing capital, right? Like there's some strong seasonality to it and it's different. Like, a you know, everyone eats like a fat kid from Halloween through to Christmas. Hmm. One of the things we've learned is don't lean in and spend a bunch of money on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. If you're in the healthy food space, save your bullets, lean into January, right? I really can't go too hard, like, you know, for New Year and New Year. Um, and then we can calculate LTV, right? So a repeat customer, you can see that for the body wash stuff, a repeat is around three and a half times more valuable than a new customer. Um, whereas in Dio, right, a little bit lower cart value, but same, like a repeat customer was on average between three and three and a half times more valuable. That's why you want to go after them. We run a really in-depth P&L template. So the principle is if you don't understand accounting, you're going to get slaughtered by it. And so even though at our core, we're like a keyword targeting and a marketing firm, um, we're really good at running like the financials, understanding where we're at. We get a couple of inputs like COGS, um, and then we help reduce your other fees with Amazon so you can be as profitable as possible. Um, I'll skip the testimonials, but you know we've had some fun. We've, we've had some failures. I Truthfully, I think our failures have taught us more than our wins. So with that, I'll open it to questions. Like Any questions? Anyone have a problem they want to talk about or any questions about Piranha, Amazon in general, or how we ramp sales for brands? If it's all right, I'll start and then people can kind of jump in. But um, I know the importance of reviews um, and 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 there's just a ton of different businesses and business owners here on this call. So um, how do you uh, how do you recommend getting say if you're starting off and you're starting off fresh, like how do you recommend actually getting reviews um, and what strategies would you use to, uh, to do that? Yeah, great, great question. I would say like, um, my, my first thought is to leverage the white hat programs that Amazon has. So their short-term and long-term strategies. Our job is to give a range of options. I really like leveraging like Vine. Um, if you make a great product and you stand behind it, you'll get some haters, but, I really like using the Vine program. It'll give you 30 reviews. It's Amazon's approved pl platform for it. Um, you have to be pretty careful. So like you can do top stickering where you put a QR code on the inside of your, you know, like say the inside of your lid or on the inside of your packaging. You can use inserts, but they can't redirect off Amazon. And then you have to say, hey, we'd love to, we'd love your feedback, but you can't say like scan this QR code to leave a five-star review, right? And then Amazon's got pretty strict policies around incentivizing reviews. Um, I've seen brands be penny wise, pound foolish. So yeah. my thought process is, yes, there are things you can do like search find buy to get some short-term boost in the rankings. There are a, a really cool tool we like. Um, I'll drop this in the chat. Um, we have a client that uses it. It's called Product Wind. Um, product wind is a great resource. So, you know, and there's a, there's a bunch of others, but when it comes to getting reviews, at the end of the day, my motto is sales solves all problems. Yeah. Um, the other tool that I really like is you can integrate a tool called feedback Wiz, 
and feedback whiz is pretty great too. Nice. And does this apply to, because I know there's a lot of authors and people here that have content driven uh, businesses, like even summits or docu-series or various like information-based businesses and brands. Does this, do these review sites and, and things like this, does that apply to say content, like or even books on Amazon, like Amazon booksellers and those types of things? Yeah, it uh, Vine, I'll put it in here. Um, it's a little bit different when you're on the author's side. Uh, reviews still matter. The third-party tools work, right? Um, but uh, it doesn't work for like service type stuff. Amazon has some, sure. really just works for widgets. So if you're selling the physical copies of the book, it works better than if you're doing like the Kindle downloads. But um yeah, it, it it definitely works for the author side. We have a we have a nonprofit project that we work on occasionally uh, where we distribute um some Christian books uh for uh for a church. Nice. And, uh we noticed that there was like a lot of malicious activity around it. And so we cleaned it up and then um we zeroed out the margin because there were guys profiteering off of it. And so we distribute it as like a nonprofit service. You know, it's, it's good material. It's kind of like, if you look at, if you go type in like the Quran or the Bible on Amazon, right. You'll get people that are, you'll get good actors and malicious actors. You know, we, we, we just thought it would be good to give back to the community. And we found, we did an interesting analysis. We discovered that 20 to 30% of the book materials were going to prisons. So, you know, we, 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 we sell like, you know, we sell the Bible and then we sell like uh, the book of Mormon, another Testament of Jesus Christ on Amazon. And we, we zeroed out the margin and then we cleaned up some of them errors and mistakes. There's still some there, but what's interesting is it, you know, items like that naturally review really well, but in books, it does work a little bit differently. What we found was it's more effective to ask people for their feedback. And then you tend to get longer reviews because people that are readers tend to be writers. And so um, we had a client that sold women's books and uh, they did like teenage fiction, um, you know, like it, very, very well known. They sell five to 10 million a year in, in female teenage fiction books. And uh, one thing that works really well is giveaways. So if you give away copies of the book and ask people for their feedback, you have to be a little careful on the way you do it. Um, they technically need to pay full price for the book and then you can reimburse them off platform. Amazon doesn't really like you doing that, but it's insanely effective. So we're is really- that, Is that the search find buy? Uh, because we use, we're doing that right now with our products, but what- is that what you're referring right. that's to? What, that's what search find by is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's really effective in the book space as well. Where, what site, like what, do you have a domain for search? Find? I just searched search find by and I'm not finding anything on that. Yeah. We, we don't give it out because people, um, the reason why it's because we run it, it's proprietary. We run it through a process. And, and what happens is if somebody just tries to, go like run a giveaway campaign, they'll get in trouble with Amazon. Okay. So you got to know what you can and can't do. So we're pretty careful about, you know, you, you want to layer some on, we have brands that have like liked it so much. They're like, Oh my gosh, we want to spend 200 grand a month on this. And we're like, Hey, pump the brakes, buddy. Like, yeah. Like you'll get, you'll poke your head up and get shot if you do that. Right. Like you can't just have like <laughs> you have 300 reviews drop on like Bluetooth headphones in 24 hours and think that's going to work out well. No, I understand completely. Well, I appreciate that, man. Um, guys, I want to. Great I'm, question. I'm hogging. I'm hogging all this. So, uh, who else has a question? Want to jump in? So I got plenty more, so I can keep going. But I'll jump in. You said okay. with C4, uh, you beat out Red Bull. What, like, what do you think the keys to that was? Uh, price, different, the, different strategies. <clears throat> yeah, I'll I'll share screen really quick if that's okay. Do it. Please. All right. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes. 
One of my favorite tools is Google Trends Explorer. And um, if you go to Amazon, and let's say I type in energy drinks. Okay. See what pops up. Let's go, let's go actually hit like a, a Red Bull listing. Um, they they've since adjusted a little bit, but let's take um I'll I'll back up just one. A good example would be say like sugar free. Let's use sugar free Red Bull. One of the subtle differences uh, that makes a big difference. And so you can see here, Red Bull, even on their own listings, is a little bit inconsistent. But the first 72 characters gets weighted more heavily than the full 200. It's a little thing about the A9 algorithm that most people don't know. And so here you've got Red Bull with sugar space free. Here you've got Red Bull sugar, no space free. And then a lot of people, it's grammatically correct to put a dash. You'll see that quite a bit. Um, here's what the search volume looks like. So sugar dash free versus sugar free versus sugar free with no space versus zero sugar versus no sugar, okay? This is in the US past 12 months, obviously like you can take it with a grain of salt. Um, what is currently on Red Bull's listing, right? Is a variation on either sugar with no space. And then they had a lot of the dash stuff when we originally took them down and they've since pivoted, but there's a 50 X difference in search volume, right? On without versus with a space. And uh, there's a 25x difference in search volume with a, between a dash and no dash. So if you think about it, people go to Amazon, they start typing sugar free, right? They type sugar, it auto prompt pulls up, they see like sugar free, they click on it, right? It auto completes and then takes them to the search results for it. No one types in a dash. So while it's grammatically correct, while chat GPT will drop, will kick back like sugar dash free, um, variations on sugar free, no sugar, zero sugar. If you look at Dr. Pepper, right? Dr. Pepper cans on the front of the can, right? Coke and Pepsi still have not fully figured this out. They go really hard on zero sugar. And I think zero sugar is great. But if you look at the search volume of what people actually search for, they actually search for sugar free, right? With mm. a space. So, you know, depend, uh, you know, if you look at the difference between zero sugar and sugar free, again, very clear data over a period of time, very clear winner. And we can play around with it. Like we can go like, hey, last five years, right? I mean, it's, there's a home run clear winner here, no question. Wow. One of my one of my favorite analysis, and we did this too, is there's some trends in the subcategory that are really important. So, and just for fun, I'll point this out. Right here's the difference between um, gluten space free and gluten dash free, and you'll see people talk about stuff that's grain free. I'll take the gluten free all day. 32x difference in search volume all day long. And and I guess uh, uh Amazon's algorithm hasn't figured out how to how to adjust that, right? Because you, you do this in Google and Google knows what you're talking about. Amazon doesn't. Yeah, like you would like to think like the algorithm's smart enough, right? To figure you know what algorithms are really bad at? Like common sense. <laughs> yeah. Right. And and just <laughs> some common sense processing. And so it's like, well, grain free might be like technically accurate, like over oh, not just removing the gluten, the grain free folks will talk about how like they're removing like all of the grain, right? Not just a part of the kernel. Um, and then the gluten dash free folks will say this is, you know, your English teacher would say this is grammatically correct. Um, you know, there's just like a clear winner. So we're not trying to change humanity and make them grammatically correct. Like we just listen. And, you know, there's some interesting trends. Like if you look at um, keto, right? Keto was really big um, five years ago or a few years ago. You'll see like it had a very clear peak, right? Back in 2019. 
and then you would see the seasonality was just insane. You, same thing here. Um, so there's always like a peak in January for keto, but Hey, like that diet fat is kind of like past its prime. And when you look at, um, when you look at like, let's say like last 12 months, cause that's pretty relevant. And you look at keto, vegan, gluten-free, paleo, paleo projects really well, but turns out nobody actually likes to eat tree rocks and nuts. Um, keto is like a really good fad, right? People think they're keto. It's really Atkins 2.0, but it's really difficult to actually be keto. And it's kind of on a downward trend. Um, vegan is like a religion. Cause if someone's vegan, they'll tell you about it in the first five minutes and try to convert you to watch a Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary. That's a joke. I'm not trying to offend anyone that's a vegan. Um, but vegans got a lot of staying power. So to answer that question in more detail, we listened to for some of these trends like this, and we dropped those in the back end listing terms. And then we got really aggressive for our competitors' branded traffic. So, um, one of the things we did is on Amazon in the subcategory. And if I'm boring you, I can stop talking. But in the subcategory, let's take uh, this one, for example. If you scroll down, and I've got some extra Chrome extensions on here that are really cool. You can see today we're number three in energy drinks. Um, what we did is we would focus our spend on the guy just ahead of us. And we would concentrate on targeting just ZOA or just Alani New or just Rockstar. So when someone types in monster energy drink, right? We would be the first thing that pops up from an advertising perspective. We got really really good at doing that. So, um, you know, it's obviously highly competitive time of year and a little different, but you can see like the normal monster can doesn't even index in the top, you know, 20, 30. I mean, it's down here at number 35 and they made a key mistake. They did a 15 pack. Hey, geniuses, nobody buys this in a 15 pack. <laughs> right. When they moved it from a 12 count to a 15 count, they dropped 30 spots. Oh, <laughs> so, hey, guys, like we're not trying to reinvent the market here, but a lot of people on Amazon, they buy a 12 pack or they buy a 24 pack. There's very well established price points. You can see like there is some variation on price points, but. If you're going to buy a 24 pack, you can get a 24 pack of sugar free Red Bull at 3850. So put that as like a reference point, right? And this is when we talk about listening to the market versus shouting at it. Monster Energy Drink is got so much hubris that they think that they can fight the market. And the principle is there's just more poor people than rich people. Mm -hmm. And they forgot that most of their buyers are poor people. Wow. So, and you can see here, Ghost Energy, multi-million dollar brand, all the geniuses in the world. I can tell you, they they think they are just got the best game possible. It says Ghost Energy, sugar, dash free energy drink. Okay. Well, they've got energy in two of their first five keywords. Uh, they have energy, but not energy drink together as their first non-branded term. And then they've got sugar dash free. I don't mean, I don't want to say like, it's pretty easy to take market share from them. Right. And then they, they noticed what we were doing with you know, vegan and gluten free. So they dropped it in here, but you know, a lot of people are looking for like no jitters. These are just a few of the things we did. Like title tag optimizations are obviously key. Um, images are great. You can drop some, drop some stuff on here. I'll share another data set if I can find it really quick. I wasn't planning to share it, but I hope that it's a long answer to a short question. Actually. I like it. I went to a, I went to a concert or I went to a, um, Amazon masterminds thing in London put on by three Colts and they, Threw up some really interesting data around if you have, if you have um, the number of words you have on your images actually matters. Hmm. 
and uh, the number of objects and how zoomed in it is. So let me. Are you saying number? Are you saying words on your product, or these are complementary? Yeah. Words. So we they did a study that basically like if it they you they used some AI to analyze twenty thousand Amazon listings, they looked at what impacts the click through rate, um, like the relative size of the objects, which is a new variable I hadn't really thought about. Basically, if you zoom in, and if you keep it simple, right, you add zero to four keywords onto an image, you'll improve the click through rate. Um, and here. They looked at things with one to four objects in the image, five to eight, nine to 12, 13 to 16, 17 to 20. The principle here is common sense. Keep it simple, stupid, right? So people have like a pile of chocolate chips or like, you know, we had a term in, at Quest, we called it explosive food porn, right? And it's <laughs> like the, the Twix bar that's like breaking up, blowing apart and all the gooey caramel and stuff inside short answer is like you can be as fancy as you want but um simpler is usually best and um, when you're looking at keywords and key terms it helps to have zero to four images on the on the um on the on the images for your for your Amazon images. But here's the last thing that was really interesting. There was one exception to the data. If you look at the impact, the number of words has on your images, here was the impact on click-through rate. If you have zero to four words on an image versus five to nine versus 10 to 14. So we're comparing how many words you have on your, on your Amazon images versus the click-through rate. And basically the more words you add, the lower the click-through rate gets until you get to 35 plus. And we thought it was an error in the data. However, when we looked at it, people, the ones that, the, the reason for the spike is people adding reviews that addressed a customer pain point. For example, I've been taking protein powder for a really long time and I haven't really seen an effect. If you put a good review on your image, Amazon tells you you can't do that. The truth is they don't enforce it. So if you drop a customer <laughs> review on the image, the reviews were the one exception. If you put a review on an image somewhere in your in your six to nine high-res images, you don't want it to be number one, number two, number three. But if you put it in the four through nine slot, um, the click-through rate goes up by quite a bit. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Little things that you probably know you won't find anywhere else that no one else can tell you. The goal today was to share some like some insights that people probably didn't know. But yeah, Chris, great question. Anyone else have any questions or awesome. any follow up? Before we get to another question, man, let's just give them a round of applause. Thank you for all of this, man. This is just this is just really great, and it's obviously. Uh, I see a lot of it just on working with you guys, but it's really cool to see kind of uh, going deeper in, in, into it all. So thank you for that. Uh, hey, Robert, buddy, what's up, man? I saw you uh, popped in a little late. How you doing? Yeah, say I just got here. I'm so I'm so sad that I, I missed that amazing, the bulk of that amazing presentation. I caught the tail end. I was like, holy shit, this is so cool. <laughs> we he gave uh, away all the secrets. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. There's a, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're out of secrets, man. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, we were actually talking about you a little earlier here, bud. Um, I want to make sure that you and Jed and, and Emily here with Piranha get connected because they're starting to work with um, TikTok as well and some of their bigger brands. And so you're our TikTok master. And uh, also I see that a lot of opportunity with your supplement line getting on Amazon as well. So I just want to make sure that you guys get connected. Oh, fantastic. Let me drop my, my info in here. Um, so my, course, my course strategy is let's be friends. Let's be allies. I dropped uh, three Colts and refund Hawk in the chat. Three Colts has a suite of tools, a lot of different tools. Um, refund Hawk is another company we started that does the auto refunds that gets you free money back from Amazon. It's a bounty program. We don't charge for it. Just it, we take like a 20% cut of whatever we get back for folks. So, you know, if you want like an analysis or something like that, happy to help. But these are some tools we use that help us. 
Yeah, Robert, very cool. Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, that sounds sounds great. So, I'm going to jump in with another question based on comments and and reviews again, because I know that this is just such a uh, such a like an important and key component of the success on Amazon. Um, can you talk to me about how Amazon weighs uh, what would be verified reviews? View reviews come through customer purchases and general reviews because i know i hear that you can just generally just review on there right but then also this now video professional video component review where you can get people to uh add video based reviews of the product itself yeah i think the unboxing trend is a big deal and i think the the principle is blank space does nothing to make your case. So the recency of the review matters. It needs to be in the last, the reviews that are in the last two or three months or sooner get weighted really heavily. And you'll see this. Let me um, share screen again really quick. And I've got a hard stop here in a few minutes. So apologize. But no, that's okay, man. Happy to pick it back up anytime. So if I go to Amazon, we use a tool called Keepa. I'll, I'll use Red Bull as like a, uh, well, that's actually not a great example. Let's stick with C4. Um, let's look at like their pre-workout. Um, Chrome extensions are one of my favorite hacks, by the way. Um, if you don't use Helium 10 or DS Amazon Quick View or Jungle Scout or Keepa, you should. But one of the things it does is this is Keepa right here. The Chrome extension drops this data on the listing, so it's easy to find. And I can see here, if I zoom in, it's probably a little hard to see. This product has been on Amazon for 2,494 days. Um, the, uh, the line, this top box with the list price versus Amazon's price, you can see the product has always been listed at $29.99, but I can see every minute when they have dropped price, raised price, and then the green line is the bestseller ranking. So I, it's like a stock chart. I can see the relationship between sales velocity, i.e. the bestseller rank, and the price action, right? Mm. So if a reseller drops price on a Friday night when they think nobody's looking, we'll catch it, right? You can set alerts. You can do some really cool stuff. AMZ Alerts is another really good tool. But here you can see that Amazon is, is flashing the price down. So they're flashing the price down to $17, then taking it back up, then flashing it down to $17 and taking it back up. When you're analyzing a competitor's listing, you do this. Now, the point I was making with this is if you look at the reviews, this is an example of what it looks like when you don't buy reviews. It is a slow and steady build. The average review rate, is 4.6 that doesn't change right see the bottom right here yep. the the blue so the average review rating has been 4.6 and the review count is just a steady upward trend now contrast that with like a bluetooth headphone guy and let's say that it's not a name brand let's pick some guy that like we barely recognize like this guy right never heard of it before probably like a Chinese knockoff brand. If I scroll down here, right? Uh, let's go to all time. Um, well, probably easier to see. See how he got all of his reviews taken away right here. And then he got them re reinstated right here. Mm -hmm. See that he's periodically having lots, see these little drops. He's having lots of reviews removed. Um, He's only been on Amazon for two years, but if you look at the slope of that line, it's a much steeper slope, right? Mm -hmm. A lot more. He's having a, he's having a much higher review rating, and you can then you can see here, he's running a bunch of deals. He's dealing with some reseller issues. It's easier to see, um, like you'll see, like it'll just be like three hundred reviews got added in a day. I don't think three hundred people decided to go to Amazon and review some random product in a day. 
you'll even see it with like Amazon's own products. Like right here, look at this. On Thursday, November 9th, they had 16,000 reviews. Three days later, they had 16,000 reviews. How did Amazon go from having, you know, having less reviews and like in less than two days, they have 300 more reviews? As like some of my employees would say, that's a little sus or suspect, mm. right? Yeah. Here, they get a bunch of their own reviews removed, which means they got policed by their own system down to 12,000 reviews. A couple of days later, they added 1,800 reviews in less than a week. Yeah. How do you add 1,800 reviews in less than a week? How do you do it? You buy them. Yeah. Right? This is Amazon Basics. And I cannot explain to you how they're removing their own reviews and then they're getting them all added back fairly quickly because a normal brand can't do that. That's just, those are just a couple of examples. That's, that's so awesome. And I, I want to respect your time. I know you got to go. Uh, we'll follow up with just some of the um, extensions that you mentioned and, and also if, with your slides, if you're okay with that, man, but thank you so much. I know you got a jet. So guys, I'll make sure that you get connected with Jed and, and, uh, and yeah, and just their team is fantastic. So buddy, thank you so much. Anytime. Great to meet you guys. Let's be friends. Let's be allies. Reach out anytime. Nice to meet you. Thanks, I man. dropped those tools thank in the you. chat for you. So the, you guys are welcome to use those. Wonderful. Thank you. And Emily, you sticking on? You taking off? I know she's still, she's still here. All right. Perfect. Well, guys, what'd you think of that? That was intense. That was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. You're so, old. Um, I think part of this kind of thinking through some of these strategies and these opportunities, um, is taking a lot of the content. Uh, if you don't have a physical product, say that you, you know, we have such amazing amounts of content. I mean, Chris, right now you are just building so much content with the summits and part of me just thinks like, okay, so how can we, how can we take advantage of the work that we're already doing um and uh and you know frankly uh use it to our advantage and immediately comes to mind is like amazon and utilizing books and uh i want to give um i know I, kareem i know you're still here i want to give you an opportunity or anybody else an opportunity if you wanted to share or even Addison we mentioned it previously but if you wanted to share anything we do a quick hot seat or I can show you something cool that I found this last week it also regards around Amazon and I can continue the Amazon conversation but I'm going to leave the floor open of what you guys what you like to do so I have a random question that came yes. up well, that was inspired by his um, presentation and looking at like sugar-free with a hyphen or sugar-free. And so I looked up like doctor with the period, like Dr. Heather Sanderson or doctor without. No searches with the period after doctor and oh. the searches are doctor without the period. Um, and I'm just thinking like, so in our marketing materials and our messaging, like how do we take advantage of that? Mm hmm yeah. So, I mean, I'll start, uh, but I, I would say that, oh, where's is Peter here? No, I thought I saw him pop up. All right. So it's, it's about the platform mm -hmm. because um, I, <laughs> I look at that and I say, that is a Google hack if you've ever seen it. And then you also have to look at how many people are actually spelling doctor all the way out. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even add that one. Yeah, I doubt and it. So, I mean, I so, not, but yeah. Yeah. Because here's another thing that when I was working and when uh, I had um, yeah, partnership with Dr. Jockers, mm -hmm. we bought, I so I bought um, every variation uh, of the domain so we could use it 
in various ways. So like I had Dr. Jockers spelled out. And then we also had variations of his on .net org and all that other fun stuff but when you look at at google that is that is really going to be kind of a google uh ads opportunity to say the least so yeah. um because what people are searching for i think <clears throat> it's probably going to be a lesson of opportunity of facebook um but it, it now yeah i think that google is probably one of the bigger components if you're going to use that and leverage that in a, in a really big way but what's the phrase you're you're ultimately trying to go after? Because if it's if it's a branded phrase, I don't think the dr or dr period matters. But if you're looking for you know doctor holistic doc dr like that, that would make a difference potentially. Well, yeah. I think what what I think she's yeah. I mean, I think what she's saying is whether it's a phrase. This is we now have kind of expanded. Uh, the pocket of of audiences so it's like well shoot misspellings are also something you consider as well yeah i was oh. thinking more in terms of even like the personality like the person like i know this expert i want to look at them up um like i think in, in that the case the, that, yeah. i think in that case the dr or dr period doesn't matter because it's going to be the name of the person that is going to so far outweigh whether mm -hmm. there's a period or not, like no mm -hmm. one's going to type Dr. Sanderson and, and then end up, you know, somewhere else. Yeah. Versus Dr. Really. Period, right? Like the, mm -hmm. that's that's not going to be relevant because the key important yeah. words are the actual name. Mm, yeah. So I just added it without the Dr. And that is the high. That's it's about this little bit higher than Dr. But... I think I think where this comes into most play is her topic. Okay. Yeah, so I looked up like, that now. That's a whole other. Yeah. It's like brain mm -hmm. doctor and in your area, like, or, you know, energy doc, like holistic doc, like all of. So now you have multiple rounds, like, you know, back pain doctor, you know, and you could even. Yeah. So that's, that's where I, I would foresee their there being a great opportunity there when you have a descriptor, not necessarily the person's name per Chris, which is, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I was, I thought it was curious because I did Alzheimer's versus dementia and it looks like, cause it shows you the articles and stuff. I just haven't played around with this tool. And thanks to Bruce Willis, dementia is like, you can see in February, dementia is like through the roof and it's his diagnosis. Hey, so, did that come from my notes? <laughs> no. I don't think so. I don't know. I just sent, I, I'm inter interviewing Heather in like an hour. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Said, I'm supposed to fill. Sorry, I had your form. I was supposed to get back to you. <laughs> well, the form's not filled out, but I've already prepared. And okay. one of my questions actually for the interview is why there, why is there a spark in, spike in February? Mm, well, I just found, I think it's the Bruce Willis. And she- Oh, no, uh, it is. <laughs> quoted, yeah, she's quoted an article about him too. So she's also got some press on that. But cool. yeah. Sorry, tangent. <laughs> hey, no, that's good. Hey, Robert, are you doing stuff on that too? Like, are you creating videos like why dementia is on the map because of Bruce Willis? Like how Bruce Willis changed dementia is interesting. No, no, I haven't been thinking about that. My my most recent crusade is defending peptides. The FDA is trying to take away peptides because they're going to replace 80% of prescription drugs and you can't patent them. Um, oh. And so they're, they're now trying to make it difficult to prescribe them and this is like a really big deal so that's that's my most recent thing that i'm working on wow i think both of those all those are great opportunities um and yeah i mean that was a really cool tool that he got a, the i mean the trends in itself is is pretty exciting um let me show you guys something real quick that uh, I use, and you don't even have to use this for, um, you don't even have to use this for any kind of books or any kind of Amazon related thing. You can just use this for, so buyer trends. So check this out. And we're here on Amazon. I'm not logged in. That's another key component where I'm going to show you a tool here. Um, that's going to show you 
success volume uh, in specifically in the books category. Okay. So I still think that whether it's books or whatever, this is just for us to be able to see kind of what people are searching after, right. And what people are going after what they're most excited about. Um, but, and I might actually end up doing a, a really cool little um, give of the week on this, but give me a topic any topic, anybody jump in, whatever you want. I'm going to see about how this works. And we'll do a couple of these so everybody will get around. So go ahead and give me a topic. Party recovery. Party recovery. So we saying hangovers. So just so straight, straight. FDA doesn't like the word hangover because it's alcohol poisoning, but. <laughs> well, why don't, so, I mean, let's look at what people are searching, right? Yeah, so hangover doctors, recovery. So hangover recovery now as a book i don't know how many people who are hungover are going to be like man i'm so hungover let's go buy a book on amazon <laughs> <laughs> but but okay so what this does now uh is it brings me up to here this this like sober not boring now it's a gr it's a chrome extension called katie spy it's like 60 bucks. And then what it does is it gives me the full list of all of these books that are in this category. And then you see here, it shows me all of the reviews and then how much revenue each of these books are making. So like this one here, this one has five reviews that it's making $510 a month. This one here has 733 reviews, yet it's making five grand a month. Give me another topic. Give me anything. Anti-aging. And so you can get even more niched into this. And uh, you look here, anti-aging. What's cool is that it also kind of breaks down the price of the book, um, and, and a lot of this is like, you find little opportunity areas where, um, you can, you can even search out like, uh, this should hurry up a little bit. It's working slow. Um, I'm amazed that Tony Robbins life force isn't top or, um, the more recent one by Peter Atia. Oh, let me try this. No, let's go back to what we just said here for books. Uh, I I did anti-dash aging. Okay. So let's see what this does with without the and maybe it doesn't classify his book as an anti-aging book. I don't know. But it's super cool to kind of see. All right, well, this I was gonna say maybe longevity might be. Yeah, yeah. Lifespan, there you go. That's by uh, Claire. Yeah, David Sinclair. Outlive Peter Tia. There we go. That, yeah. How is it estimating revenue? Because it shows you the total amount of sales. And then based on various components of it being a physical book versus it being a digital book. And then also if you have it uh, color versus if you have it also in uh, black and white uh, versus um, price fluctuation, there's a lot of different components here, but what's cool is that you look here and how we age. I mean, there's only one review on this yet. There's 1200 uh, of monthly revenue on this. Um, and then it goes even deeper. Like this one is making 133,000 a month. What right. is that book? Outlive. So let's take this. Peter oh, it's Peter. Outlive. Okay. Yeah. It's making a hundred. Wow. Peter T is making a hundred grand a month on a book. Wow. Well, yeah. Amazon keeps 70% of that. Um. <laughs> so uh, I don't know that. And I don't have the calculator. I don't remember exactly what the calculator is. Um, but I know that you can. You can go in here and you can see uh, here. These are here's another, as you can see, it just shows the, the ranking here. But um, 
anyway, it's uh, it's really exciting and interesting to see kind of like, okay, well, that book, that is based on an influencer. So that one doesn't necessarily mean that that's like directly a indicator that this is a topic that one, we could pursue if we want to go into this and write a book and that and 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 go down that path. But it is one of those things where look at the the headlines, look at what you know people are attracted to most. I mean, usually the ones that are like the smaller amount of reviews with the more revenue, that's just an indicator that there's a lot of demand there. Um yeah. Um shoot me another. Uh, I'll do Alzheimer's because I got to <laughs> the book on that. Let's do it. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I mean, you have various things here. I mean, I think that you are probably going to look at, well, you want to look at dementia, Alzheimer's, apostrophe. I don't know if that's going to make a difference there, but also you want to look at like memory. What people are searching for, are they searching for memory? They're searching for dementia. Mm -hmm. They're searching for Alzheimer's. Yeah. It's um, interesting to me that caregiver, like one of the, I think with a caregiver book has one of them, the high yeah. revenue. And that's another big the big one yeah interesting side note someone shared that if you're a caregiver of someone with alzheimer's your risk for alzheimer's it's is like greater. yes it's huge it's like some stupid number it's like 7x really which yeah. would make it like the biggest to make it a bigger risk factor than smoking and obesity because of the stress uh, of the years of stress that are piled on would be my guess I would say that. Yeah. And I also would think that um, like genet like most likely it's family members that are caregivers. Yeah. So genetically you're already predispositioned. And that might even scare them even more. Cause like, Oh my gosh, this is what's happened to my mother. Is this going to happen to me? I don't mm -hmm. want like, so there's probably like some rumination and some fear that's tacked on caring for a family member with, with dementia. Yeah. So Katie spy definitely recommend. I think it's a kind of cool little thing. And also, this is also a really cool, like for like Robert, um, particularly I'm just using you as an example, but having an audience already that if you were able to take a look at what is, um, what is generating the most revenue and you take a chat GPT slight variation of those headlines, and yeah. then you have a simple video that's like, pick my next book. And then <laughs> you have a live and say today and today, especially what I'm doing is something special. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you decide what I write next. But in doing so, you get an opportunity to get first review of that book and then and then you have them get first initial uh access to it whenever you do get it done and then from there uh you launch on amazon and amazon has a um acceler central uh function where you can make it free for like five days yeah. And then you, during that five day period, so you give them the book three weeks ahead of this and you do like a little launch. And then what you do is you give them uh, the direct link and you pour your whole following into, Hey, here is, here's how you get access to it. Here's, and then you have them uh, write the reviews. And really from what I've read and what I've uh, really um, seen here is that all you need is to be kicked off with about, 100 to 200 reviews and 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 it really starts kind of working on its own but that'd be a really cool case study to see like the journey of allowing your audience to pick your next book them actually agreeing to be 
um, you know, beta testers for that. And then now you, you have a beta test group. Really interesting. You know, every book you do in the future, they get first crack at it. It's like, you know, your, your, your VIP club. Yeah. Yeah. This is super cool. Um, the other thing too, uh, I would say, well, I'm just doing brain health. Um, is I've been working on, uh, I've got a little project that I've been working on. Um, if either of you have, if any of you have supplements, uh, or physical products or, uh, any kind of product or program that you would love, uh, actual, uh, UGC content for, let me know. So that means like, uh, if you want someone to go through, try your, your supplement for a week and get a video review and also, uh, photos of those products, both the box, the, the actual, uh, product itself, them with it, hit me up, talk to me about that. Cause, cause I have some access to um, some content creators, some UGC related reviewers. Um, and this could even be somebody who can help you product test things. So if you have anything that you haven't released yet that you want, um, you know, special, you know, NDA privacy around, these are also uh, individuals that uh, I have, uh, I have access to that I could, that I could possibly help with. So just let me know. Also, these are great for um, any kind of programs that you're launching that you want actual testimonials. And so the more video related imagery and things that you want to post on your website or sales pages, especially sales pages, um, that's something that that I have access to now. So um, yeah, is there anybody that would be interested in that? I might be. I'm I'm always looking for a UGC. Awesome. Okay. That's interesting for me, for sure, for Nubby and My Body Cookbook and potentially the DVD series that we have as well. So thank you, Brett. That'd be awesome. Cool. Yeah, I'd like I'd, I'd like to learn more. And then, at Brett, at some point, I'd like to ask you a few questions about selling on Amazon, um, see if it's, if it's worth exploring. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whatever you, yeah, I'm open. I, I, I think that working with them has been, has been wonderful. Uh, and also just the Amazon world is so vast. Uh, but I, you know, I, I think there's also other elements of this too, like the book side that I know they don't normally do that I feel has merit as well. But, um, anyway, um, is there any other searches you guys want me to do before we close up or any other questions that you guys would like to, uh, present to the group and have a chat about? That's a just that's a paid version, right? Of what? I'm of the KD Spy? Yeah. So I don't I didn't know if there was a free version. I think it was just I don't think it was is. 60, I think it was 60 bucks or 70 bucks one time. And that was uh yeah, that that was that was it. So it's it's just a Chrome extension, which is pretty cool, you know. Yeah. Um, let's see what the brain health is. I always wonder how do they get the data from Amazon to know what the unit sales are? I think just like what he showed where he had another extension that's just attached to the page itself. It's able to crawl that. Um, this is interesting. Robert, look at this, this one book right here, medical medium brain saver. It's making 52k a month on oh my 1800, gosh on 1800 i i drink celery juice because of the medical medium i don't like all this stuff but he's definitely i mean tony robbins had him on one of his programs he's definitely got a serious following i didn't know he was actually attacking the the brain health area good for him and dr gundry's got a new one no, it's not gundry perlmutter i'm trying to get him on my tiktok to promote his new book Ooh. the way these people crank out books i wonder how they write them I have no sitting. idea. I've never heard Beans. of ChatGPT. Have you? Uh, I, I mean, they, Dave Asprey was doing this before ChatGPT. He was cranking out books. Before. Like they're they're cranking I'll, out books. 
this is something I've studied pretty extensively, Robert, if you don't mind, I'll comment. I'll, I'll yeah, weigh please. in on that. And I've written many, many books, probably more than 20 now at this point. So uh, most of the time, with the exception of God Gives Love, which was a very special thing, books are written within 30 days and edited within 90. I give twice as much time for editing, but I don't put as much intensive time into it. Essentially, the strategy comes down to uh, a really uh, detailed outline and then a dictation from there. Uh, it tends to be the fastest way that it can get transcribed and edited professionally, and then you can come over for a final edit. And that really speeds up the process significantly. So those are a few tips. I could, I'd be happy to present more on that at any point, but that's amazing. Um, yeah, that's really helpful. I've written a book as fast as, you know, eight days before and as slow as, like I said, three years, but the rest of them with exception to that one was written within 30 days. So hopefully that's helpful. And how about a give of the week for uh, writing your book in 30, write your book in 30. A hundred percent. Are you in, man? I'd be glad to do it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Anything I can do to help. Just let me know. I love it. Um, well, let's, I'll follow up with you, but first of the year, uh, Oban. So let's see, we have the, today's the 28th. So this is the 12th, the 26th. Um, so that would be January 9th. Is that, does that work for you? I think so. Yeah, should. Okay. Oban, can we follow yeah. up just to confirm? But man, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to help. Um, okay. Do you guys have anything else? No? Okay, cool. Uh, Gabe, um, you and I, uh, I got to uh, give me a quick minute. And then Kareem, uh, I'm going to chat with you here in about 30, if that's okay. I'll plan sure. on. That sounds great. Why don't you just text me whenever you're ready and I'll be on with you within 10 minutes or so. Does that sound good? That sounds fantastic. Guys, thank you so very much. Appreciate all of you. I think this was great. Uh, next week, let's talk about some audiences. All right. I appreciate you too. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. See you.